All right, boys, we have Abram versus John Beast. You guys may not know who Abram is. And honestly, uh, I wasn't super familiar with him either. He is he just turned 18 years old. You see him in the top left right here. This is his first MCS live event. And you see the NR right here on the very left. You might not be able to see it, actually, with the little uh, framing that we have. But he was not ranked, not even top 50, against John Beast, former belt winner, one of the best man players in the world consistently. John Beast is number six ranked right now. And we have Abram on offense early. And this was a, this was a cool game. Abram, obviously, for the most part, people typically want to be on the kicking side of the ball. They want to kick off to start most games because ball at halftime usually is seen as a pretty big advantage. But I like what Abram does here on offense to begin the game. He's in bunch strong right here, but what we're going to see is he's going to do a pretty good job of running these bubble screens to do a really cool job of attacking 6-1 on defense. So let's look at John B's defense here on the next play. Whoa, double juke, get out. You got to be using those juke moves. Is he going to touch on that? He does. All right, so let's look at John B's defense right here, actually, then, because he just scored too fast. My fault. My apologies. So he's in what's called, John Beast is in 4-3-6-1. Uh, it is a defense that puts a lot of people on the line of scrimmage. You see one, two, three, four, five, six people all almost inside the tackle box right off the tight end. And there's not much edge help. This is really good for blitzing, not as good for coverage. So you got to think if this guy bubbles out circle right here, if he bubbles out and let's say this guy's blitzing. So block block. Let's see what happens, right? Pretty basic how this works. And you can kind of see it right here. We get a one-on-one, -on -one and the, the juke moves so good in this game where he's able to make numerous people miss. I mean, a total of three people essentially miss right there. And Abram's able to get a really easy touchdown. Now, one of the big pieces of advice that I gave, my, I gave myself this after I played in a live event many years ago now, dating myself, but I, <clears throat> I told myself, you have to find a way to make the game easier on yourself because I felt like in that live event where I lost – was when I started playing bad. And because I played bad, like the my play style was so reliant on me being on my A game always that when I was playing bad, it was it it, it, it really translated to the on-field performance. Whereas if you find a way to make the game easy for yourself, which Abram does right here with just throwing a bubble, anybody can throw this. You are a and then juke, right? This isn't a ton of it really isn't a ton of super high level thought process, uh, reading, all that stuff. Stick work was pretty good, but it, it, it's he's coming in with the game plan. It's going to make it easy on himself to attack 6-1, and that's one of the ways right there, and it's pretty simple. It's kind of like in basketball, right? If Steph Curry isn't feeling himself, look, nah, he's not a great example. If Kyle Culver was not feeling himself, he would not be much of a threat on the basketball court, right? If he's missing shots, why the hell do we have Kyle Culver on the court anyways, right? Shout out to Kyle Culver, by the way. Bulls and Hawks, legend. Um, whereas someone like... Let's say, let's say old, let's say old Shaq, right? Let's say Boston Celtics Shaq. These are not good analogies, right? He, even if he's not feeling himself, he's going to be able to dunk the ball. He's going to be able to get rebounds still, all that good stuff, right? He can be having an off day and still make an impact. And that's how that kind of offensive strategy is right there from Abram. Hopefully that kind of made sense. Make the game easy on yourself is what I'm getting at. And John B is going to run the ball. Now, Abram is in the dime Four one six defense. It's just it's just called dime normal in Madden, and this is gonna be a pretty decent blitzing set. Very similar to six one, where you have a lot of people in the middle in the middle right here. But instead of these outside linebackers that Jombies has, he has slot corners. So better coverage, worse blitz. And we're gonna see Abram actually back off these corners quite a bit. Let's see what Jombies does on offense. He's Jombies in the Philadelphia Eagles playbook. You guys know I've ran the Philadelphia Eagles playbook a lot this year, and immediately hitting a pretty good route combo right there. Uh, I've act, that, that, I like that combo a lot. Essentially a triangle. I don't love... Let's see what he does here. Okay, I like this. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I was going to say, I thought he was going to run a different combo that I've seen him run that I haven't loved. That's something where, geez, the fall four is pretty fortunate for John Beast right there. You're getting a few extra yards, but I, I feel like I've talked about this a lot in these breakdowns, right? This is... If you're going to get beat somewhere as a defense, getting beat by the quarterback scrambling up the middle, especially with a non-fast quarterback... That's just what you live with, right? Now, this is a final four of the most feared tournament. This game right here is worth, I think, $30,000, give or take, something like that. And so, I mean, it's obviously very high stakes. Winner of this will go to the championship. You'll be able to play for a belt. And immediately, John B's hit him with the juke move. Juke move, able to get out of bounds. Almost able to scurry out there for a touchdown. And we have a first and 10 with three minutes left in the first quarter. 
John Beast, again, with the ball, rocking the Patriots uniforms. I think both these guys are using Joe Montana with Hot Rod Master. Hot Rod Master, the, even if you don't love Joe Montana's release or his speed, the <sighs> Hot Rod Master only being three AP just makes it where, good dot right there, crosser from the point wide receiver beats man coverage. Hot Rod Master just makes it to where it, it's just hard to justify not using it because even Hot Rod Master gives you apprentices everywhere, every position you have access to every route. For three AP, one apprentice on an individual wide receiver, like running back apprentice, costs two. Slot apprentice costs two. Outside apprentice costs two. So it just makes it's economical. It makes more economic sense to use Howard Master, especially if you want to pair it with like Gunslinger and Gift Wrapped, which I do. Right here, we have Abram back in offense. He's in the Bengals playbook, I believe. Possibly the Bears, but probably the Bengals. And he's actually going to get sacked right there for a big third and 12. That's what that uh, 4 3 6 1 from John Beast was able to do. Able to get pretty good pressure, some disengages in the middle. And I'm surprised you didn't see Abram go back to kind of that bubble on that second down. And we'll see him on third and 12 motion out the wheel. John Beast only sends, well, not only sends five, but sends five. And the wheel route is just barely overthrown. Man coverage. Wheels do a good job of getting over the top of man coverage in this game, but you do got to be able to still hit the throw. Abram barely pushes the ball a little bit too far. Don't know if that was a little bit of an inaccurate or if that was totally his fault. But we're going to see a 4th and 12, which if you're familiar with the competitive Madden, they always be doing this. And Abram's in the Bears playbook. He's in the Bears playbook, by the way. So has bunch offset, has tight offset, has tight or has strong, uh, bunch strong. We're going to see really just made the read between the post and the in route right here. In route bagged. I don't love this route combo, and I'll kind of tell you guys why. So we have two crossing routes right here. We have crosser right here and then crossing route right here, right? They're, they're, they're meshing, but they're meshing pretty deep down the field, 12 yards down the field. So you got to think it's going to take about three seconds for them to actually mesh and get far enough away from each other to where you're not using both of them, right? About three seconds, give or take. You have a streak, which is a clear out. You need that. And then you have a wheel, which you're probably not going to throw it early. You could, but you're going to wait a second. So we have a couple of seconds right here. It's such a long developing play. And against something like 4-3-6-1, where you know he's going to be sending at least four people, you know he's going to get sheds, it's just a low percentage play. Now, mind you, this is not the best situation, 4th and 12. It's going to take some time. I'd, I think I'd rather see him somehow attack the middle with, like, curl routes or maybe a singular post in a curl route because you got to think a curl route is going to be able to separate or you're going to be able to run his entire route way faster than a post route can, right? Because this post route, you have to wait for him to also mesh with this guy. So just something to keep in mind. You can kind of see that right here where not a bad route combo. He's going to have something open, but you see these guys haven't even meshed yet. Literally, they have not meshed yet. So you're just making a, a read. You see the wheel route hasn't even broken upfield yet. Yeah, it, it's it's tough though. It's a tough situation to be in, especially with that type of pressure coming at you. So, you know, it, it's easy to say it in hindsight. Route combo, is was it open? It, it would have been open, but... You just don't have that time. And John Beast, in a very offensive oriented game, he's able to get a big time stop, which is uh it's gonna be tough to tough to overcome for Abram even early in this game. And John Beast gets the ball at half, but not the end of the world. You gotta still keep on playing because either person get a stop. John Beast has had the opportunity to throw a corner route a couple of times now. He's opted not to, although I'd like to see him maybe go to that corner route on the left side. Uh he keeps on hot routing that corner route over there and hasn't taken it yet. This is a basic verticals call. You can go with this. Let's see what he does on this right side with a crosser. Looks like he's going for a little bit of a shot play. I'm not super. Okay. Sure. So he basically just made this entire route combo himself. That's what Howard Master lets you do. And really good pocket right there. Got, I mean, if you're Abram, if that's how he beats you, that's how he beats you. You're also kind of like, hey, I'm sending four people, five people blitzing at him. So I'd like for somebody to shed and sack him. Really good pocket presence from John B's right there, though. Like you can't, you can't say anything against that. That was really, really good. See the route combo on the left side, post, corner, drag. Like this combo quite a bit. Great, and you can still see his pocket presence over and over. And again, another play where his pocket's going to get him into the end zone. And that's, I mean, that that is in a game where people love to talk about. There's no skill gap. There's no whatever, whatever. I mean, watch how much time he buys against a. What kind of rush is this? This is a this is a three man rush. But even still, like the backup right there, being able to get away from the user, being able to stay strong. A lot of people don't do that. Fact of the matter, a lot of people don't do that. Now, Abram did send three, and he contained one of his guys, so they're not going to get great sheds. But, I mean, you can just watch that play and be able to tell that, man, not a lot of people are going to do that right there. 
Let's go Abram on offense. We actually, the broadcast missed his first play, but I believe he just threw the bubble roll fast, which I think he could sh he should continue doing. And now he's going to go back to, he's in that bunch strong, right? So one of the reasons I like this type of formation so much as he throws a quick flat to the verticals wheel route is whenever someone runs match on you, while match, you can bomb it in a lot of different ways. My favorite way to attack match, honestly, is to say you can't run match. And the way you do that is you get four receiving threats all on the same side of the field. So when you look at Bunch Strong, we have a halfback to the right, and then we have three wide receivers also to the right, so you can't run match. Now, that doesn't pertain a ton to what's happening right now in defense, but just something for you guys to know. That's how you just cancel out match, and they just run. It turns into cover four. He's going to turn that deep post into a little bit more of a crosser, disengage up the middle, and you can see a lot of inexperienced players will get super spooked by this. This DT disengage is pretty common, and he gets nano detected, which is also common in this game. But a lot of players would get spooked, throw the ball away, throw a pick, run away, whatever, whatever. And it does collapse in the middle of the pocket as well, so you got to back up like you did right there. Good dot to the drag going to the left side. Again, we are in the second quarter now, and the clock is moving a little bit. TJ's in a tough spot because with John B's getting ball at half, and where he's at on the field, he can't really clock super well. He could, but he's not super well. And this is something you got to keep in mind. Even if TJ scores a touchdown, let's say he scores a touchdown with a minute left, it gives a minute to John Beast to go get points. Let's say John Beast gets three, so now he goes into half up three, and John Beast has a ball at half up three, a touchdown, he's up 10. And just like that, the game's in a tough spot for Abram. That's why, I mean, getting stopped early is bad, and then clock management's a huge deal. Even here, I think I'm trying to super milk this, and he, he, he doesn't care about milking, which is fine, but... It's just tough. It's tough. Because John B's, in terms of even even just giving up a touchdown right here, is in such a fine spot because he gets ball and he, uh, he gets ball out of half as well. Throws the bubble. Love that bubble. I think it's a really good way to attack 6-1. A lot of people are going to struggle defending against that bubble when they're playing against or when they are in 6-1. It's one of the biggest weaknesses I see with 6-1 in like just basic online play. I think that style of, of Madden is very popular when you're just playing online head-to-head. -head. Not even so much in comp, but in online head-to-head, -head, you'll see people throwing bubbles a lot. And that's why I'm just like, I can't run 6-1 because these dudes just throw bubbles all over my field, I feel like. So, yeah, just something to keep in mind. Third and two, though, huge opportunity for a stop from John Beast. And then a huge opportunity, obviously, to tie the game up for Abram. Let's see what he does right here. Had the bubble, doesn't throw it, ends up taking it up the middle and score a touchdown. One, two, three, you not effing with me. I, I, I like that. I like that name from Abram. I'm surprised they let him have that. And we're going to see John B's back on offense right here. And immediately we're going to see, can we please rewind this slightly? Okay, it's just not going to let me rewind. So John B's whole goal, he's not an idiot. He knows he doesn't need to milk this half, and he's in a great spot. It's why he's going to run the ball on first down. And ideally you pick up yards, but even that, you're going to take this underneath three minutes. Once you're underneath three minutes, it's really easy to get underneath two minutes. Once you're underneath two minutes, easy to get underneath one minute, and then you're in a great spot. And you can see him. He's running that clock. I'm curious how far he actually takes that play clock down. I'd have to assume underneath 10. And, yeah, it looks like he's going to be right around 10, 11. Yep. Double pose. Very basic combo. He actually misses a C route. Doesn't want to risk it. But notice he takes a sack, and it was second and 11. Look what it is now. Third and 13. So many people take sacks for huge losses for a loss of five, a loss of 10. And it ruins drives. Whereas you take a sack for loss of two, you just kind of shrug your shoulders. It's, hey, whatever. We keep, how you doing? Keep it moving. Third and 13. Clock still going. I'd like to see him get this underneath 230, and he will after the play. So now after this play, if it's in bounds and the clock keeps moving, it'll be going into – oh, he's going to launch that. Got it. Good dot. It's going to take us to a two-minute warning now, which is easy for him to get all the way down. And I'm making a lot of emphasis on the clock here because – it's something that I've really focused on improving in my game in the in this Madden year. And I think it's a way a lot of people can get better at the game. Just not even getting better, but winning more games, which I guess is getting better. But like, it, it, it's an easy way to end up winning more of these close games. John Beast, if he can score a touchdown with like 30 seconds left in the half, 20 seconds left in the half, and then get ball, he's in a great spot. Big run right there. And if you're Abram, John Beast scoring a touchdown isn't that bad. Seriously, like if, if you're Abram, John B scoring a touchdown right there is not that bad if he had broken it because then at least you'd have a chance to tie the game up before half. Whereas the way it's going, it looks like you're going to be down going into half and then out of half, right? Because you could almost remedy, touch on right here, you could remedy the issue that you have with being stopped into making it almost like you never got stopped. A, dang near. 
Whereas now, the way the game is working out, you gotta go get your stop of your own, which is fair. But uh, just kind of a way you can steal possession almost. Their uh, read option or inside zone right there, inside zone split. Jambi's doing a good job of going between the inside zone split and the read option. Second and two. We're going to see if Abram burns another timeout. He's not going to yet. And yeah, Jambi's just milking the clock all the way down. You see him with two clock on. And yeah, if you're if I'm Abram early in that drive, I almost... It's not like you're giving up a touchdown purposely, but you're just playing super aggressive to where either you're pushing them back or they're getting a huge gain. So you don't get into this situation where, again, I got to assume one more run from Jambi is going to burn that timeout. These next two play calls should be runs, 100%. 100% should just be very basic run plays. And we'll see what Jambi ends up doing right here with the Christian McCaffrey run CMC in the backfield. A lot of different halfbacks are, like, very usable. Yep, there it is. Probably going to be another run call right here. Have to. No reason to pass. Because after this run, the play clock should go all the way down to about 10 seconds. And then who, you, you have two plays, score a touchdown, or you can kick three, whatever you want to do. You have that read option yet again. He's actually going to keep it, and so he purposely slides down to milk more of the clock. Yeah, and he throws the finger. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Which, is, I mean, it's smart. It could be a little risky. It's hard. That touchdown right there is hard to give up. I'll say that. Because already Abram doesn't have any timeouts. So if you were to give up, he scores at 44 seconds, goes up seven. And if you give up a touchdown 44 seconds without timeouts, it's like, all right, what are you doing? You know? So that one's a little bit hard to give up. But I, I get what he's doing. This is where there's a lot of argument and clock management of what you should do. There's just a lot of like, uh, who knows? It goes dive, gets blown up. Now, Jambi's going to let this go all the way down to one second. And let's see if he kicks three here or if he goes for it. That's why that not going for the touchdown, just sliding short, is that's why that gets scary. Because this, situ this situation where a stop right here from Abram, hey, you're tied in the half. That's who he does. Jambi's going with the play spacing. No, going to go all the way over to double post. Has an X factor on the left. Motion blocks, quick throws, got it, touchdown. Abram gives up a really easy touchdown to a flat. It was manned up from the inside, but it's not going to do anything. I mean, just, the best thing possible for John Beast right there and the worst thing possible for Abram. Yeah, now look, we're in the third quarter now. John Beast has ball up seven. And this is what I was talking about. It wouldn't be the worst thing ever for Abram to give up a touchdown really early in that last game or in, or in that last quarter uh, with about a minute or two minutes left just because then you'd have a chance to tie the game up at 21 going into half. Now you're down seven, don't have ball. And for all this clock management stuff to make sense, you've got to understand something, and that is defense in this game is really hard. It's very unlikely you get stops, especially full stops, which is what Abram basically needs. So you've got to play the clock game because that's where you can start stealing possessions from people. It's something that I've gotten way, way, way more knowledgeable about and way, way, way better about recently in this past Madden year. And Javis might be taking a shot right here. Nah, let's see. I mean, he's definitely going for a deeper hitting play. I'm curious what he's actually doing, though. Because I'm not very familiar with this play at all. And he's going to have the drag. Got it. DK Metcalf holds on to it. Now, John, biggest thing he wants to do here is touchdown. Not worried a ton about the clock. But inside of your offense, you can purposely, you know, run the clock down to, you know, five seconds on the play clock. Because you are playing the clock game a little bit for John. But if you have a touchdown or something... You, you take that, obviously. That's why you see the run on first down right here, right? Keep the clock moving because now we're going to be underneath three minutes in the third quarter. And before you know it, it's going to be fourth quarter. John is seven, about essentially 20 yards away from a two-possession lead. So you got to think, two-possession lead, fourth quarter, your win probability just skyrockets, right? That's who he does on second and 10 here. Has three plays to get a first down. Probably all going to be passing. Going to go double post. Let's see what he does. Yep, block the halfback. Basic route come. We've ran it all year. Doesn't really have anything. Good pocket. And then late, just... John B's really put on a clinic with his pocket presence in this game. Like, seriously. This is another one where if you step too far back, you really can't throw this because it's just a tight ball and the ball's in the air for too long. And then right, th like, just fits it. Great pocket. If he got sacked right there, it would have been a loss of two. So it would have been a third and 13, and who cares? Whereas a lot of people get sacked there, third and 18. They can't make that read. They can't make that throw. John is playing like very good, just textbook Madden of how you win Madden games. Inside zone, or as a read option, I think, CMC. 
Going to possibly get out. Ooh, first down. Yep, Jumbies. You see, clock's going to be underneath two minutes now in the third quarter. So just seven, seven minutes left in this game. And he's going to be up two possessions, assuming he gets points here. Let's go again. Inside zone. Read option I'm in. Now we're going underneath. He is going to go with a pass play right here. We'll see what he goes to. Got it. Post route up top. This is a really good play. I remember watching this live. Let's see if the route comes. Is this a post? Does he go post right here? He does. Post right here. In route. Boom. Look at the post route. Wide open. And then really good, really good free form. A lot of people will pass lead that right. And it can get picked off by the safety. Pass leads it up and outside with a high ball, I believe. I mean, just like that is up two scores. Now, Abram, definitely not out of it by any means, right? Just it, it, It's just harder. He's in a tough situation to end up winning the game. He has to probably get two stops to win this game. And we'll see first and 10. He's got to move the ball pretty fast. And that's what he's going to do, hitting a deep corner route. This is the play flood. This is a tight end corner from X. Goes all the way up the field and is able to dot it up. That is a tough dot right there. Getting above the 30-yard cloud flat from Jombies. It's tough when you run when you run double Mabel and your whole purpose is please attack the middle of the field and you still give up a sideline route, that's tough. It's a riskier throw, but he had definitely had leverage. Clock's going, and he's going fast too. He knows he knows how important it is that he scores fast. So he goes corner strike. I like this play call. I don't like I'm not sure what he's doing now though. I'm not I don't know what he's doing. Let's see what the play is on the right side. A lot of hot routes. Okay, cool. Basic flood on the right. Has flat, throws the flat. He's doing a good job of attacking this kind of more compressed defense. Just, I mean, it's same idea, right? I like, instead of slot corners, he has outside linebackers, which can't defend the sidelines. So you're just isolating defenders. You got to attack horizontally when you're playing this style of defense. Let's see. Good defense. Has touchdown. Yep, easy. John Beast kind of over adjusts. And, I mean, it's pretty basic, though. Like, look, what, think about this, seriously. If... Who can defend this flat route on the left side? This flat route over here on the left. Who can defend this? Has to be the outside guy. So if he defends it, who's going to defend up here? Has to be this deep safety. But the deep safety was manned up because John Beast just thought he might be on a streak. So a halfback is on a wheel. Honestly, this is a mistake from John Beast's user, just kind of forgetting his assignment. But it's a really good play. And that touchdown being that fast, 20, you know, we have a minute and a half or five and a half minutes left still in the game. Abram's still in a really good spot to be able to, you know, claw his way back. And no different than – the thing I'm thinking about, though, is I don't even know if I've seen, like, a real third down from John Beast except for – Abram's, like, best chance is, like, that's realistic in my mind, is obviously, like, a cheat from EA because now we're in the fourth quarter, or a half stop here. So he goes down 10, scores a touchdown, and then gets another half stop. That's, I could see that happening. Second and nine. Let's go post route. Ooh, that would have been risky. That stops the clock, too. That's huge for huge for Abram. This is his best chance for a stop, actually, right here. Third and nine. Let's see what he does. Got to see the dime. Watch these slot corners on the side. Jami's going to end up five outing this, it looks like. Yeah, he is. Let's see it. No, he's going to block the tight end. I like that. Post around the right side. Wheel. Wheel might be a big play. Good pocket. Wheel. Again, really good pocket present from John. John tries to get sticky. Bad stick work. I think he's on conservative. And the clock's moving now. Probably can get to about 3.30 or so on the clock, yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I totally misread that. Just under 4.30. Has a two-possession lead now. Read option. Cuts it back. Big play. Second of one. Even second of one's a big deal. For an extra 30 second to be able to get ran off the clock, possibly. Let's go. Paul Krause shoots a gap. Cut third and four. Here's an opportunity for a half stop, though. That's what I was referring to. Like, definitely, half stop's definitely in, in, in the uh, realm of possibility here. Third and four. If it comes to fourth down, John Beast is obviously kicking. So, ideally, you hold him to, you get him to a fourth down with the clock stopping right here. John B, it, running the ball here is not a terrible idea either, but John B's going to go for kind of the killer and pass the ball. Drag, got it. Kyle Pitts holds on to it. That's going to be at least another 90 seconds off the clock, which is going to take it to the two-minute warning. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a tough it's a tough spot to be in here. Read option. And if you're John Beast, I think this is three runs. No matter what, screw trying to even – I mean, first down ends it, but screw anything else, though. Another read option. 
decent run defense, but it doesn't really matter. Abram will elect to hold on to the timeout. Uh, I do the same thing, actually. And John B. Sun passes on third down. This is one of those, like, either it has to be wide open or you don't throw it. It is wide open. And then John B.'s, dude, I don't mind the pass right here. You, it just has to be, hey, either this is wide open or you don't throw. And it was wide open. And then he stays. Instead of scoring the touchdown, he gets a first down. And that, that, that basically cooks it. It leads it to an onside kick, right? John B.'s ends up scoring. Uh a touchdown the next play, but he takes one of his timeouts, one of Abram's timeouts. Abram does move the ball pretty well on this drive, I believe. Let's see. Boom, post route. And that's where that one stop just kills Abram. Coming, he's 16 for 18. He's played perfect on offense. The only way he can remedy getting that stop, getting stopped like he did would be that clock management before half. He could have done maybe a better job with, but I also don't blame him for trying to get a stop and just playing Madden legitimately because that's – that's the same way I, I would play the majority of the time. Minute 23 left. Two timeouts. Still have life. Going for a shot play right side. Might have it, too. Let's see. I'm going to force it. Just over. He agged John B's user. Nice. Nice. Abram. Life. Slight life. I don't like the onside kick call here. You can get the ball back. You can get the ball back with just a stop. Like, because right here, if you onside kick it, he's already in field goal range almost. And then he gets a flag. I think you also have to lab onside kicks, like, to just be able to make sure you get it correctly. So, yeah, John Beast needs five yards for a game ceiling field goal. Boom. Gets knocked backwards. Second and 12. All right. Here we go. John B's going to pass. And this is ballsy. This is where a lot of people will run the ball and be a little bit scared. John B's going to pass the ball. He honestly is saying, I have two plays in a field goal range or three plays for a first down, depending. Blitz is there. Good defense. The KO comes in. Third and 12. If You just got to get six yards to get into field goal range. If you don't get the six yards, though, fourth and 12, you might go for it. You, you might. Let's see. Vert's under. We have John watching. Don't love the route combo. And Abrams user just. So this is a pretty high level thing that you'll see a lot of comp players do is watch this angle route. They'll playmaker him. Right. They'll playmaker him up. I'm surprised Abram didn't see that coming. Cause like, while it is a good play from John Beast, it's a, it's like a, it's common. A lot of people do it. And so I'm surprised. Not the, not the best play call on the right side here. And honestly, just in general, because like the user could easily bag that play, and Zombies would have had a huge fourth down. But that's gonna do it. That is GG's right there. That's yeah, that's game. If you are interested in getting better at John Madden football, civil.gg link in the top of the description below. Code premium gets you twenty five percent off everything. All of my schemes, all of my guides, Discord, every single thing you need to get better at Madden. We have proven results from thousands of members, thousands of Madden players, just like yourself who are trying to get better. Code premium, civil.gg link top description.